Buffers are a nightmare, but there are some easy things you can remember and help you not get so overwhelmed by them that will help you so much more in the exam. Now, buffers are, they're the burden of every A-level chemistry student. I can't remember a time where anyone has ever said to me in all my time teaching, I really enjoy buffers because buffers confuse you. It's the use of the Ka expression for a weak acid, but in a context effectively, and it overwhelms people because you have to do a lot of rearranging, and it's not obvious how the buffer has always been assembled. Now, I have already gone through a buffer calculation, which if you click the little eye in the corner here, you can be taken to the cards for that, and so that will show you how we can analyze the buffer calculation, but I just wanna go over exactly what a buffer is and how we can make that buffer solution. <laughs> So, a buffer solution is a weak acid and it's sodium salt, and it will resist the change in pH despite the addition of small amounts of acid or alkali. It maintains that pH. And so if your buffer has a solution pH of 4.30, then when you add acid or alkali, a small amount, not don't get giddy, I mean, don't like slug it in, because obviously that's gonna break what I'm just saying, but it will maintain that pH. Now, what's different about a buffer compared to just a weak acid then? When you have a weak acid, you can make the assumption that the weak acid is the only kind of proton donating species in the solution. And so when you look at the top part of the Ka expression, so when you're looking at the numerators at the top, you've got the H plus ion concentration times the A minus. With the weak acid, you can assume that those two concentrations are the same as each other. And so you can square the top part and that allows you to find that pH nice and simply because all you need to do is the square root of Ka times the HA, which is the acid concentration. Now, just to make it clear, the buffer is different because the H plus ion concentration and the A minus ion concentration are not the same. So that squared feature, that squared assumption is completely gone. And that's basically it. That's the only real Ka setup difference that there is. So how do you actually achieve that difference? How would you physically make that in a lab? Well, you can do it one of two different ways. Now, the first thing you can do is quite literally, take some weak acid, take its sodium salt. So for example, ethanoic acid, sodium ethanoate, and mix them together. And then you've got in a beaker, those two things together. They don't react, they just form a mixture. And so that is a buffer solution. And there you go, you're done, nice and simple. But it's not always that straightforward. Sometimes what you could be given is an excess of the weak acid and some strong alkali. Now, that would be something like ethanoic acid being mixed with sodium hydroxide. Now, that ethanoic acid isn't yet a buffer. When you add a limited amount of sodium hydroxide to that though, making sure that the weak acid remains in excess, you perform a neutralization reaction, but not a complete neutralization. Some of your weak acid moles will be left over in the solution meaning that the resulting solution will still have a weak acid concentration. What you've also got in there though, after the reaction, is some of the sodium salt that would be made when the acid and alkali react. We know they react to make a salt and some water as well. And so after that reaction is finished in the beaker, you've got your weak acid moles to give a weak acid concentration and some salt moles have been made to give a salt concentration. And so you have effectively weak acid and sodium salt in the same solution. Just like the first example, but a little bit more of a tricky way to get to it. That's all a buffer is. The trick then is realizing and remembering that you can rearrange the Ka expression as a subject of any of its terms with no squared feature in there whatsoever to find a concentration of anything from there at the actual buffer state. So once the buffer has been made, you could ca calculate the concentration of the A minus they wanted you to, or the HA. It wouldn't really matter. You just make sure that you don't have that square root or squared feature in there whatsoever, because it's a buffer, not just a weak acid. The other thing you need to be aware of is what numbers will change when acid or alkali get added, and as a result, the buffer will move to adjust that. If you pour in lots of, I'm not gonna say lots actually, because I'm gonna start contradicting myself here, because a buffer will only maintain a pH if small amounts of acid or alkali are added. So let's just retract that a little bit. Let's say we add a small amount of acid to our buffer solution. What's gonna happen? 
Well, you've introduced more H plus ions there because if you add a strong acid, you're gonna be introducing something like HCl, which dissociates completely and so is providing H plus. Now in the weak acid equilibria, that's gonna cause for the equilibria to shift in the direction of the intact weak acid molecule. So away from the H plus getting rid of that H+, which is our main contributor to the pH value, and so the pH remains the same because despite the amount of H+, going up, the buffer shifts to make sure that that is brought back down again. OCR really, really like it when you use the term conjugate base. And so, for example, if you were talking about the addition of acid to the buffer solution, you would talk about how the conjugate base, which for example in ethanoic acid, the conjugate base of that is CH3COO-, how that reacts with the additional H+, and forms more of the ethanoic acid molecule. OCR really, really like it when you talk about the conjugate base in your explanation of a buffer. What happens if you add OH- in? Because the weak acid equilibrium doesn't seem to have an OH- present. What it will do though is the OH- from something like sodium hydroxide, if a small amount of that is added, it's gonna react with the H plus from that weak acid equilibrium and it's gonna drag our equilibrium towards the H plus side, trying to build back up that H plus ion concentration. Remember that pH is minus log of the H plus ion concentration, so even though the H plus initially goes down, my shift makes it go back up to where it was and the buffer can maintain its constant pH. I hope that gives you some clarity on buffer solutions and how they can respond to small amounts of acid or alkali and how you can also create a buffer. Don't forget to watch the calculation walkthrough straight after this video because it's gonna give you additional guidance and support in mapping out your answer to some of these buffer questions. Until the next time I see you though, happy revising.